Hello people, it's time for a new adventure. Today we are going to get up the Avila, which is the mountain that surrounds Caracas and divides the city from the Caribbean Sea. This mountain is extremely present in Caracas. You can hike up or go up the easy way and take a cable car. Here we are people ready to take the cable car that is behind me all the way up to the Avila. I recommend you to go there early as it will get super crowded in the afternoon. The inauguration of the cable car was in 1955 but it was closed at the end of the 70s and remained closed for many years. Entrance for foreigners is $30 while Venezuelans only have to pay 10. You need to bring cash as a foreigner and also a document of identification. In 2000, the tramway has been rebuilt and reopened, and the same accounts for the Avila National Park that is up on that hill. From the cable cars, you will get impressive views all over Caracas, but I think it is not made for people who are afraid of height, as the ride is 3.5 kilometers long and there are parts where the ground is super far away. Depending on the weather, you might literally enter the clouds with the cable car. All right, we are almost on the top of the Avila and from here you can already see impressive views all over the city. We can see the whole city from the east to the west and it's getting more and more clouded. The higher we get, the more clouds we see. We were actually extremely high at some points and it was kind of scary. The Avila is about 1,500 meters high and we are about to enter the clouds right now. So I hope we will still have a nice view over the city from up there, but we'll see. I think the clouds gave you a very special feeling and it gave the whole scene a very dramatic vibe. The ride is about 20 minutes long and we will get up about 1500 meters. We are now entering the clouds. We'll see if from up there we can still see the city, but if not, there are, like, there are routes to do some hiking. There's the Hotel Humboldt that we can see from there. And of course we can see the Caribbean Sea from up there. We arrived! Up there on the Avila Magica, you will find lots of entertainment. For example, there's paintball, ice skating, and music, and lots of other things that you can explore up there. <laughs> There is a long pathway that leads towards the Hotel Humboldt. On your way, you will find a lot of typical Venezuelan food, so make sure to get up hungry and try some of the delicious plates there. The weather up there in the mountains changes quickly. We really couldn't see that much when we got up there, but there was enough to explore anyway. You may not expect it in a city that is so close to the Caribbean Sea, but in Caracas you will actually find the highest ice skating place in the world. And another side note, you cannot leave Venezuela without trying a burger there. They are the best, just look at it. In general, Venezuelan food is super delicious and quite special, but I will talk more about that in another video. When first walking along the path up on the Avila, I was astonished by all the street food that was offered there and all of the activities that you can do up there, as I hadn't been expecting this. The Hotel Humboldt was hiding a bit behind the clouds. 
It is an almost 60 meters high building that was completely hidden by the clouds when we first arrived. We are literally in the clouds. Here behind me you are supposed to see the Caribbean Sea. It's quite cloudy right now um, and the weather changes quickly. So sometimes you can get a little bit of a view over the city that is on this side or over the sea. Let's see if we can see a little bit more. Just from close up, I noticed the beginning of the tower of the hotel when the clouds were moving, but I had my doubts that I would be able to get the full view of the Hotel Humboldt that day. But little by little, the clouds started to shift a bit and the tower got more visible. So I got my hopes up that I would just have to be a little bit more patient to get the full view a bit later. So I decided to just keep walking for a while and come back later with hopefully more luck. All right, it's a little bit clearer now. We can now see a little bit the sea behind me. This is where the sky and the sea unite each other and you can't really see the difference, but here in that hole of the clouds, you can definitely see the Caribbean Sea. How do I know that if I do not actually see that much? Well, maybe you remember one of the first scenes of the first video of this series, the view from the airplane. What we saw there was exactly the view of the Avila from the Caribbean Sea. The view above Caracas was not the clearest that day, but nevertheless the sky was clearing up a bit so that the view of the Hotel Humboldt was getting clearer. On the way back towards the Hotel Humboldt, we saw some hikers coming up the Avila. I mentioned before that you can also hike all the way up and I was told that this hike takes more or less two and a half hours. Now it's time for a little excursion to see what this hike could more or less look like. Hello people, it's time for Avila part two. This time we are doing a hike, it's about 30 minutes long and no, we are not going all the way up there, that would take a little bit longer. As I have mentioned before, there are various routes on the Avila that you can take. We will now just do a part of one of them and not go all the way up. We will reach a point that is called Sabas Nieves and is at an altitude of about 1300 meters. It is possible to get all the way up the Avila Magica, but that would take way too long for now. Close to the starting point there is a lot of food and drinks that you can buy. There are for example very refreshing natural juices or natural ice cream that is extremely nice for a hike. How beautiful is this place? There are actually a lot of people here. Apparently it's a tradition for people to come here on Sundays and do a hike and also some sports. There are little gyms that are free of charge and yeah that's why a lot of people here are doing sports and there's a highway nearby that is closed on Sunday so that people can use it for a bike trip and yeah a walk on a highway actually it's not a difficult hike it just goes up a little bit um, but the incline is not too bad yeah so it's also for beginners we will reach the point that is called Savas Nieves which is at an altitude of 1300 meters. So it's not that high, but from there you can continue all the way up to the Avila, where we went before with the cable car. You can definitely notice that this hike is quite popular on Sunday, as there were lots of people, and parts of it are exhausting, but it for sure is manageable for all kinds of fitness levels. All right, people, I still don't change my mind. This hike can be done by everybody, but at some parts, it definitely doesn't align with European safety standards. And it's more inside than I thought, but still, it's not that far. And I'm sure that anybody can do it. There are break points where you can take a little break and later continue. So you got this. Oh, and also there are amazing views over the city. I definitely found the views of the city quite impressive from up there. Or to be honest, I also used the viewpoints as an excuse to take a little break on the way up. All right, we almost made it. The exit is right there. So here, on this side, is a gym. 
Please. There are people that are doing this hike and afterwards they are going to the gym. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, there are actually a lot of active people, a lot of very athletic people here. But I'm not going to change my mind. This hike is made for everybody. Venezuelan people told me that they are doing this hike traditionally on Sundays with their families. So there are lots of kids here. There are um, people of all body shapes here. So this hike is harder than I thought it was. But definitely everybody can make it. But one thing, Venezuelans lied to me, people. They said it's about 30 minutes. It took me 45 minutes. And no, I didn't take a break, not at all. So plan at least 45 minutes for this hike. Um, yeah, if you need some breaks, definitely more. There were already quite a few people up there. While most people were just relaxing, some still had the energy to do some sports. I preferred just to sit down, relax and drink some water. All right, we made it to the viewpoint of Sabas Nieves. This is where people have their picnics, have some rest and also do sports. And behind me, there's the way that you can take if you want to continue further up the Avila. I'm going to have my break here and we'll go back down again later. I really appreciated the fact that you can refill your water bottles for free up there as I did not bring enough water with me. And I also enjoyed the nature there and watching the birds before going back down again. By the way, although going down again usually is a bit faster than going up, I always feel like it is way more exhausting for the legs. And when going down, I also always notice the steepness way more. I really enjoyed this hike and would have loved to continue further up, but there was no time for that on that day. I personally think it is a great tradition on Sundays, as I really like the idea of doing something with friends or family out in nature, escaping the big city feeling for a while, and I'm always up for hikes. All right, we made it down again. This is where we started and now it's time to enjoy some natural ice cream or passion fruit. All right, it's time to go back to the top of the Avila. The sky got much brighter by now and it was less clouded. So I once again started to walk towards the Hotel Humboldt to give it another try and get some shots there. On the way to the hotel, also the Caribbean Sea was way more visible by now, as the holes between the clouds were now much bigger. And guess what? The Hotel Humboldt was finally not hiding anymore and clearly visible. Now it's time to tell you the story behind this hotel. Building the hotel has been initiated by the government. Marcos Perez Jimenez led this big project. The goal was to construct this 60 meter building in less than 200 days. And they did manage to build it in only 199 days. The building was a symbol of the prestige and modernity of a thriving country in 1956. But the hotel only operated for four years. After that it has been closed for a long time, but in 2012 the government approved the renovation of the Hotel Humboldt and in 2018 it reopened its doors, renovated but still in the same original style as during the 50s. Today it is a luxury hotel where tourists can spend some nights. But there is also the option to do a tour through the hotel for $15 per person. During that tour you will not only see the whole hotel, but you will also learn about its history. Another option is to enter the hotel by having some food in the restaurant. 
I was happy about being able to finally get my shots of the hotel, but also about the views that were getting clearer and clearer now. I enjoyed these views for a bit longer before going back down again. We were now able to see all over the city by now. It's time to go down and by now it's not that cloudy anymore so finally we can see the whole city of Caracas. Unfortunately it is not that clear with the camera but I definitely noticed the difference between the east and the west side of Caracas from up there. While the west is the rather poor area with lots of barrios, the east is full of high buildings and you notice that in that area there is way more money that has been invested. Sometimes it did get a bit scary when you notice how high we actually were. Anyway, I definitely enjoyed the views and again I was impressed by the city views of Caracas from the cable car. Alright, we are almost back down at the station. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any further videos of Venezuela and I'll see you in the next video.